What if the extensive form game is, is, is complicated? It, well, it might be a very long game or maybe there are many players or many actions and, and <clears throat> sometimes player, uh, players move simultaneously, sometimes sequentially. And so in that case, we need a, a tool that is uh, sort of stronger than backward induction because backward induction can be applied only to games with perfect information. And as I said, we can apply kind of backward induction approach to games with uh, imperfect information. But the thing is we have to make it uh, more formal. So this is exactly what we do. So this is uh, what, as, as called uh, one shot deviation or one deviation property is, is kind of applying backward induction into uh, extensive, any extensive form game, whether it has perfect information or not. All right. So I'm going to give you a definition first where we define what's called uh, one deviation strategy. And then I'm going to give you a proposition. I'm not going to prove it uh, because for this course, what matters is uh, what it means and how you apply it. So as long as you get that, uh, uh, that's, that's all I really want. So here's the definition. We can define one deviation strategy, first of all, for any extensive form game, and then take any continuation strategy, all right? Um, so obviously the continuation strategy is going to be a strategy in the sub game, and then take any action available to player I after history H, all right? Well, what is special about this action? Well, this action should be different than what originally this strategy tells player I to play after history H. Remember, SI slash H, parentheses H says what player I is going to play after history H, what action, all right? So AI is different than that action, okay. Then we define one deviation strategy. We denote it as S sub I OD slash H, which is again a continuation strategy. I mean, it's one of those. And we define it as follows. So the strategy, the one deviation strategy is going to tell us what action to choose after every history H prime, all right? Uh, Non-terminal history H prime. Well, this uh, action, I'm sorry, this strategy tells player I to play AI if this history HI is exactly the same as history H itself, or this H prime is the same information set with H, right? However, if history H prime is not in the same information set of H, well then uh, the one deviation strategy and my original strategy or the player's original strategy are going to be exactly the same. All right, so well, it may be uh, a bit unintuitive. What the heck is going on? So the intuition is very important. The one deviation property is a twisted version of some strategy, SI. So how do we twist that strategy, SI, and generate one deviation strategy? Simple. We fix the history, remember? So SIH is a continuation strategy after history H. All right, so fixing this H, what I'm going to do in this one deviation strategy, I will only change the action player I plays after history H. For every other histories, player I is going to behave exactly the same way. Put differently, player I is going to play exactly as I slash H, except only after history H. All right. I'm going to give an example and hopefully it's going to be clearer there, but it's very important that you understand this definition. Proposition. Suppose that our extensive form game is finite. All right, so that's crucial. And the strategy profile denoted by S star is subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of this game. If and only if for every player I, and for every non-terminal history where player I makes a move, we must have the following. Player I's payoff when he plays his strategy as I star should be at least as high as his continuation payoff should be as high as his payoff if he instead plays 
uh, one deviation strategies. And so this must be true for every one deviation strategy player I may have after history age. Okay, so well, why is this different than subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? Well, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium says, if you go back to the definition, this payoff must be greater than or equal to sum SI uh, prime for every SI prime in SI slash H. However, what we do, so basically it says, if you want to check whether some strategy profile is subgame perfect Nash or not, well, obviously you have to check this for every player and for every non-terminal history. But the thing is, uh, in the standard definition, you have to check that the payoff of player I under standard strategies S star should be greater than or equal to uh, another strategy profile where he deviates. All right, and you know what? There might be millions of different or many different uh, strategies that are available for him to deviate. All right, so you have to uh, sort of verify this inequality for every possible deviation. The, this proposition says you don't have to worry about for all possible deviations. You only uh, should look at deviations to uh, one deviation strategies. And one deviation strategies are clearly narrower set of uh, this continuation strategies. Okay? So, intuitively, uh, this proposition says no player I can gain by deviating from SI star in a single information set and confirming to SI star afterwards. Again, I'm going to give an example and hopefully all those concepts will be clearer. But what I would like to underline before moving on is the following. This proposition is true for finite games, but in fact, we are going to be using it for infinite horizon repeated games, uh, Rubinstein's alternating over bargaining games, and, and many other extensive form games, infinite horizon extensive form games. The reason is uh, this proposition, uh, a version of this proposition is true for uh, infinite horizon games as well, if the payoffs are uh, uniformly bounded. And to be honest, in this course and in, you know, in almost in entire game theory literature, we just look at games that are uniformly bounded. But there might be some weird games uh, where the uh, payoffs are not uniformly bounded. And so one deviation property may not work. But actually, you can be kind of uh, 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 confident that this proposition, the one deviation property, can actually hold in finite and infinite horizon games, okay?